Radio Romania International. You are listening to our one-hour broadcast in English for listeners in Western Europe and Japan. We can also be heard on the internet at www.channel1. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter and other social media platforms. Our programs are also available on TuneIn and via satellite Eurosat 16A on 11.512 MHz vertical polarization azimuth 16 degrees east. Symbol rate 29.950 mega symbols per second standard DVB-S2 modulation 8 PSK audio PID 510. We wish you good reception conditions. Welcome to the news desk with Mila Kamara Simeon. First, the top stories. The President of the European Parliament, David Sassoli, believes that the future European Commission will be able to take on its prerogatives on December 1st after Romania, Hungary, and France propose new commissioners. The election campaign for the November presidential election has kicked off in Romania. And Romania's national men's handball team, Dinamo Bucharest, defeated 30 to 20 away from home. Russia's team, Chekhovsky, Medvedi, in a Champions League match. European Parliament, the Italian David Sassoli said Saturday that it would be probably impossible for the future European Commission to take on its prerogatives as of the first, and that the takeover would be postponed for December 1st. He explained that Romania, Hungary and France need to propose another three commissioners whose candidacy have to be analyzed by Parliament. The confirmation vote of the entire team made up of the German Ursula von der Leyen was scheduled for October 23rd in the European Parliament during a plenary session in Strasbourg. The candidates of Romania and Hungary were rejected by the Legal Affairs Committee jury due to suspicions of possible conflicts of interest. France's candidate also caused integrity-related suspicions in the context of investigations into alleged fictitious jobs when she served as an MEP. Saturday saw the start of the election campaign for the November presidential election in Romania. 
14 candidates are running in the presidential race, among whom the incumbent president, Klaus Johannes, representing the National Liberal Party, the interim prime minister, Verica Dancila, from the Social Democratic Party, and Barna, representing the alliance Save Romania Union Plus, Teodor Paleologu, representing the People's Movement Party, supported by the Alliance of Liberals and Democrats and Pro-Romania Party, and Kenevan Honor from the Democratic Union of Ethnic Hungarians in Romania. Running for the presidential seat and representing extra-parliamentary parties are Catalina Ivan in Nelpea, Sebastian Constantin Popescu, John Bano, Ramona Ivana Grunsius, and Gerald Tatarama. Bogdan Stanojevic and Aleksandro Kumpanashu are running as independents. The first round will take place on November 10th, and the second round will be held on November 24th. Under a government decision, the Romanians abroad will vote in the first round of the election for three days, from November 8th to 10th, and from November 22nd to 24th in the second round. President Klaus Johannes will announce on Tuesday at the latest a proposal for the new Prime Minister after consultations with parliamentary parties. On Friday, after a first round of talks, the President announced the urgent need for a transitional government made up of the National Liberal Party around this party, which initiated the motion of no confidence that led to the dismissal of the Social Democratic government led by Jurica Dancilo. According to President Ivanis, the person nominated to head the new government will have to form a new government as soon as possible, as they need to draft the country's budget for 2020 and to ensure the organization of presidential elections. Although the president favors the idea of early parliamentary elections, he admitted that this is a very difficult thing to achieve. Now news from sports. Romania's national men's handball team Dinamo Bucharest on Saturday defeated 30-20 away from home. Bucharest team Chehovski and Lopvedi in a Champions League Group D match. With two wins and a draw in the previous matches, Dinamo Bucharest accumulated seven points and consolidated their position as group leaders. They managed to obtain 12 consecutive victories in all competitions. And now we have a special announcement. Two of the five shortwave transmitters that beam RRI's broadcasts are not working. One of them is located in Siganesht, BD3001 in Bucharest, which broadcasts RRI's programs. Radio Fan, our broadcasting services provider, has announced that it will take up to several months to replace the broken components. Another shortwave transmitter in Galben, in the northeast of Romania, ID3001, is being repaired during the month of October upon Radiocom's request. Due to the failure of the two transmitters, the digital broadcasting standard DRM of some RRI programs has also been disturbed. Some of the affected broadcasts will be prevailed and aired by the shortwave transmitter in Softipa, near the capital of Bucharest. Meanwhile, we are kindly asking you to tune in for RRI's shortwave broadcast on the second frequency, which is listed on the frequency schedule, as RRI usually transmits this broadcast to one target area on two frequencies. You'll find the frequency RRI's webpage under the frequencies button. We are sorry for any inconvenience and hope the situation will be soon remedied. And that's the news. Coming up next, The Week in Review. Hello, welcome to The Week in Review. The Social Democratic government headed by Verica Dancilo that has been a minority government ever since August when their junior partner, the Alliance of Liberals and Democrats, to join the opposition on Thursday. Urgently dismissed, 
The no confidence motion tabled by the opposition was voted on Thursday by 238 deputies and senators after being already endorsed by MPs from across the political spectrum, including the National Liberal Party, the Save Romania Union, the People's Movement Party, the Democratic Union of Ethnic Hungarians in Romania, Pro Romania, the Alliance of Liberals and Democrats, the Group of Ethnic Minorities, an independent MP, and even Social Democrat MPs. 233 votes were enough for the motion to pass and for the government to fall. The signatories described the government as the most toxic in the last 30 years and said they would replace it with a responsible government and governing program focused on developing and modernizing the country and ensuring real prosperity for each Romanian citizen. Christian Sedler, an MP with the Save Romania Union, has said... This no-confidence motion starts from a reality that cannot be denied. The government no longer has majority in parliament and political legitimacy to govern the country. In every functional democracy, when the government no longer has parliament support, the prime minister resigns and does not wait for a no-confidence motion to be tabled. The natural thing to do would have been for the government to leave right after the vote on May 26th. And Romania taught the government a lesson for having acted against the country's interest and against Romania. In turn, the outgoing Prime Minister Viorica Dancila defended her governing program and accused the opposition of not having alternative solutions. Voi nu va luptați pentru un proiect, pentru o viziune sau pentru bunăstare. You do not struggle for a project, for a vision, or for prosperity. You do not fight to do good for people, improve their everyday life in any way. You fight against the Social Democratic Party, you fight with the opinions in the country's interests. You allied new people with zero political experience and zero government performance who are unable to manage their own party, with people who left the government and people who brought poverty upon the country between 2010 and 2010. This is a temporary alliance that today wants to dismiss the government, a bunch of interests and amateurs. How can you assume Romania's reconstruction when you do not know what you offer Romanians tomorrow or in a week? What is your plan? How will you handle things? Dancila has called on Romania's right of center president Klaus Johannes, whom she blames for the current political chaos, to appoint a new government as soon as possible. After the removal of Dancila's cabinet by means of a no-confidence motion, President Klaus Johannes summoned all parliamentary parties for consultation, pleading for a government with a clear mandate which would provide a responsible and effective governing until the next parliamentary elections, no matter when they are to be heard. As regards the political stability that Romania needs, the head of state said he supported the solution of early elections. Klaus Johannes. Voi asculta opțiunile partidelor și voi propune o soluție de ex. I will listen to the party's opinions and I will propose a solution for a government with a very clear mandate able to ensure a responsible and efficient governing until the next parliamentary elections, no matter when they are held. The best solution to run the parliament legitimate is, of course, the citizens' vote, that is, early elections. This cannot be done in the absence of consensus between the parliamentary parties. The international media has too analyzed the political situation in Romania. The New York Times says that the opposition has accused the Dungeon government of bad economic management, of having deteriorated public safety and trying to bring the judiciary under its control. According to Le Figaro, the ousting of the government opens the door to negotiations for the formation of a new majority just one month before the presidential elections. President Johannes will have to designate another prime minister, who in turn will have to get parliament support, reads the Spanish agency EFE. 
As regards the option of early elections, which Romania has never resorted to before, Bloomberg raised that it's unlikely given the presidential elections due next month. According to Euronews, to many Romanians, this last confrontation between the country's political forces is one more sign that politicians are not in contact with Romanian society. And that has been the Week in Review. A day of celebration for which you are kindly invited to send us your opinion about the role of international radio broadcasting now, 30 years after the fall of many communist regimes in Eastern Europe. The Berlin Wall fell in 1989 and many states in the former communist countries of communism, such as the Democratic Republic of Germany, Czechoslovakia, Poland, Bulgaria and Hungary. In Romania, the communist regime was ousted on December the 22nd, 1989. Whereas until then, international radio broadcasters in Eastern countries would air propaganda against Western states and Western stations would criticize the Eastern states. After 1989, many of these broadcasters started promoting the countries from where they were transmitting. International radio broadcasters have turned in each of these states into stations promoting their own countries and airing the views of the respective states on various issues. International broadcasters have also become a means of exporting democratic values. In this year's edition of Listener's Day on Radio Romania International, we ask you what is today, in your opinion, the role of an international broadcaster? What do you expect from an international broadcaster? Do you have any memories that you can share with us regarding your international listening experience in general and as listeners of Radio Romania International in particular? Well, I'm forward to receiving your answers, which will be included in our shows on November the third. You can email them to us at endio@rri.rr, or on Facebook, or send them as a comment to this article on Radio Romania International's website, rri.rr. You can also send us pre-recorded answers on WhatsApp at plus 40744312650 or you can send us your telephone number so we can call you from the studio and record your opinions. Thank you.
Welcome to our culture feature, Anthony Kurtzow. The seventh edition of the Stilet International Literature and Translation Festival, Kenyas, was held between October the 2nd and the 6th, organized by the National Romanian Literature Museum of Yash, financed by Yash County Council. Stilet is considered one of the biggest literature festivals of Europe. For five days, Stilet hosts dozens of events with a wide range of topics. Literary meetings with stars of world literature, white nights of poetry and music, professional workshops and round tables, lectures, and connected events. We spoke with writer Florin Lazarescu, program coordinator, about this edition of Philip and its evolution during its six years of existence. <laughs> Considering that the National Theater in Yash only seats a hundred, tickets for Philip fly off the shelf. But Philip is not just about star writers. We hold the White Night of Poetry, which is already a brand name, a poetry marathon of literary readings attended by at least writers at each edition, with audiences of 500 people at a time. I wanted to point this out because it is said that there is no longer much interest in poetry. But after the experience with Philip, I met writers who told me that they cannot imagine poetry events in Paris or London that would gather such an audience held right in the center of the city. We invited, at a previous edition, Nobel Prize winner Svetlana Alexeyevich, who couldn't make it for objective reasons. We thought it would be a disaster for our image. But I was wrong. So it is so big now that even a Nobel laureate may pass unobserved almost. This is why I said that Philip is not just for star writers. With this edition, we will be going to 16 high schools. And all the high schools in Yash and the surroundings want to be a part of this festival. This year, for the first time, we are going to Hudlo and Turgu Fromos because the teachers there insisted that we bring writers to their schools. After they and the students saw the events held at other high schools, that was program coordinator Florin Lazarescu. The Philip International Literature and Translation Festival in Yash is attended by great authors with millions of books sold around the world. The winners of such awards as the Pulitzer Prize, the Penn Faulkner Award for Fiction, the Goncourt Prize, the Russian Booker Prize, the Russian National Best Seller Award, the Eric Maria Remarque Peace Prize, or the Simon de Beauvoir Prize for Women's Freedom. Here is Lorin Lazarescu once again. If we are talking about the most fashionable literature, we can say that you can find here at Philip Richard Ford of the U.S., Mihail Shishkin, the best-known Russian writer, Maria Duenas, one of the most beloved contemporary writers in Spain, and Matya Enar, the French winner of the Goncourt Prize. These are some of the writers who came this year to fill it evenings that could be seen at the National Theater in Yash. And in order to get an idea of the size of the festival, may I recall that at uh, the Philip House, the tent in the central square of town, People can meet Sion of Iceland, who wrote many of Björk's songs, nominated for an Oscar for the lyrics for Dancer in the Dark by Lars von Trier. This year, for the first time, we realized that we have many writers who could have been invited to Planet Evenings, but that had to be integrated in other programs. I will also mention Danish writer Kim Leinen, whose no novel Prophet of Eternal Fjord sold in over 20 countries, and Herman Koch, one of the most important popular Dutch writers, author of The Dinner, translated into 21 languages. As for Romanian writers, we have about 90 of them, from beginners to famous ones. I don't think that you could find any reader, no matter how picky, who could not find at least 10 events to like, considering that we had over 130 over five days. That was from the Five contemporary writers have taken up the challenge of writing a sequel to one story by classical author Jon Kranga as part of the Kranga 2.0 project, which had its launch at the festival. But in Lazarus, we told that. 
Each year we have an editorial product to attract classical writers. In Yash, we have 11 branches of the National Romanian Literature Museum, which organizes the festival. Last year, we had a project where we invited writers to wa write 11 literary biographies of top Romanian classical writers. In this edition, we thought we would put the emphasis 